What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Burn Down YouTube channel. Before we get started today, I have to send a big, big thank you and shout out to the boys over at 1320. Uh, I highly doubt they're gonna see this, but I've left a bunch of messages. I've been trying to stay active on all the comment section um, on the video that they put up, if you're not aware. The Twin Bagels on 1320, and we got all the way to the number two spot out of 10. And it was cool, because my wife and I watched it, and we just watched it all the way through, I didn't fast forward. By the time we got to like number five, and then they went up to, I was like, we're top five. And then they went to like number four, and then number three, and I'm like, no freaking way. But we got beat up by the Corvair. That thing is cool as I'll get out. So I, it was funny, because when I did get to talk to Fred, I'm like, did you guys see that Corvair truck, or whatever, the, the cab, or I was calling it a cab, or because I didn't know what it was. And they're really stoked on it too. So obviously, um, very excited about that. But regardless, it was awesome. Welcome all you new subscribers. If, you, if you're gonna stick around and watch the stuff that we're doing, uh, I have a lot of content. And what we do is I just film the stuff that I do. I try to do like the hour a day type deal, bring you guys along and motivate you. And then show you that some of this stuff isn't all that hard. And then sometimes it actually is. And I show you when I come up short, we figure it out and get through it because Goonies never say die. So you're going to hear me say that a bunch, especially when I'm struggling. But um, today's episode, I got it right here in my pocket. Woo! Ta-da! So this, uh, for those of you that are not, not familiar, I have an eBay fuel cell in the Malibu, which is my drag and drive car. And um, it was just plaguing me with fuel issues for a long time, ever since I got the fuel cell. And if you looked in there, it was this black, and I thought it was a plastic float. Well, it ended up being foam. And I think, yeah, I have it up here. This is my wall of reminders of what not to do. So this piece of foam, see it was splitting. But if you look at it from the backside when it was new and you looked in there, you thought, hey, I'll, that's just plastic. It'll be good to go. Well, it's not. It's like coated plastic foam death right here. That is the fuel cell death. So I ripped the thing out, threw it in the dirt. We replaced the fuel pumps. Um, I took a non, technically non-running car to LS Fest West. We kept kind of creeping up on it. I didn't push it too hard, but we went a 950 at 143. So the car has potential. We got plenty uh, of power for me to go under 10 seconds. So we're getting all of our safety stuff in order. And I got roached out tires. So I'm kind of waiting on that. And uh, some things kind of fell through. So we're saving up, but I have plenty of stuff to do. We just finished up the belly pan on it. And then this guy, we're gonna install this this afternoon. And hopefully this will fix my fuel sending level in the tank. And then we can have a look at it on the holly dash. I got some extra E85 sitting in a tank so we can add to it, make sure it floats and goes up and down and stuff. And then I'll just keep an eye on this. Uh, I have no idea if it's rated for E85, but this is actually plastic. I think it's gonna survive and be okay. But now that I know that it may be an issue, we will keep an eye on this thing and I will keep you guys posted on whether or not it was a fix. So it was a cheap float off of uh, Amazon. I was gonna go with a brass float out of like a carburetor. But believe it or not, all my old man friends, none of them had anything just like laying around. And then when you start searching for a brass float, uh, they're really proud of those. So hopefully this thing holds up and it's good to go. So let's go open the fuel cell. We'll figure out how the hell we're gonna attach this thing. Um, and then that's it. We'll just kind of make sure it gives me an idea that I do have fuel or don't have fuel. And then we'll call it a, a day. <laughs> All right, here she is. So initially, I was just gonna change this whole sending unit out. But as you can see, it's goofy. It's like two screws and whatever that thing is. So you're not gonna find that. Let me get something. Yeah. There, that's, that's clean enough, right? Probably why we have fuel system problems, but, or had, I should say. Really? Can't even open my own fuel cell. So, I'll have to get a light. Oh, there you go. I think you guys can see that. <laughs> it's already like dirty. But yeah, there's that little L, and we just have to figure out how to attach this other guy to it. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this loose. Uh, oh, look at that. That is classy, Dane. Oh, there's a spade terminal in there. Okay, so at least it wasn't terrible. So we'll take this out, take that guy, and then we can just pull this whole apparatus out and make life easy. So. Let me yank it out of here, we'll throw it on the bench. And then I'm thinking we just take that thing and bend it around there and call it a day, but I'd like it to stay on, so we'll be a little more responsible, but not a lot. 
All right, we got this dude out, and then it looks like there's a, look at that, an aluminum plate. And then they threaded the thing. So these guys would capture it. It looked like it had a little rubber gasket. This one's roached out, so that's what all this is from. Oh, no, he's right there. So we'll figure that out. Maybe we'll put a little silicone. But I also think what we'll do is we'll figure out how to put the float on here. So you see where I just ripped it off and like I said, threw it in the... I threw it on the ground and then I picked it up so I would remind myself, but yes, I did rip it and throw it. Um, because I was not happy that... I was happy but unhappy. Anyways, I think what we will do is we'll figure out how to put the float on there. And then since this thing kind of out, I can plug it in. And then we'll do like the swing on it. And then I can calibrate my fuel because I never really calibrated my fuel gauge very well. So we'll go all the way E and then all the way up. And then we can kind of go middle and then... I'm fine with that. I just need to know when it's full, kind of half, and then, hey, Dane, put fuel on it. That's that's really all. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. Just let me know before I run out. So here is our new and improved E85 safe float for the fuel sending unit. And then uh, we'll take and plug this into the car and we'll move it up and down a little bit and calibrate it. And all I did was just bend the end over and cut it and that thing, it, it's in there. It ain't going nowhere. So it was hard to even put in there. And it's stainless, so it's like spring steel. So that thing shouldn't let go. We'll keep an eye on her. But uh, let's put it in there, calibrate this thing. And hopefully call it a win. Okay, here's my setup again. We'll move it real quick just, just to show you that I got it working decent. So this should be full, kind of half, and then uh, on E. So let's go to full. The hard thing is like not moving this thing. So there. So that should be full or roughly close to it, right? And then I've got the speed of this thing moving pretty slow, so it's coming off 50. So we're up here. We'll watch it creep uh, when it gets close to 90, whatever, and we'll call it good. But yeah. So I use a scale divisor, and it's 1.5 instead of just 1. So there we go, 99, 100. So this is the big one that wouldn't really work. It's 50, so let me see if I can kind of empty, full. So the thing flopped a little bit, but we'll be around, it should be around 50%, right? So, sorry, it's like watching weeds grow, maybe we'll fast forward. We're looking for this guy, whoop, to get somewhere around 50. And it doesn't have to be exact, because that's not an exact science. I just move the thing around willy-nilly. So, see, we're in the ballpark. 51, 52 for just eyeballing, beautiful. Last but not least, we'll go to zero. Zero or hero, right? Boom, Dane's out of fuel. We're on the side of the road. No me gusta. Let's see if we won, boys. Gotta get the close up on her. Oh, we're in the red. Oh no, fuel. 16, 15, oh, we're hitting blinkers. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Champions zero Okay, so it was I'll jump in there and show you let me put this back in there and then uh, we'll show you what Setting it was and then uh, we'll pour some fuel in there and see what kind of fuel we actually do have in the boom now that stuff Hopefully works All right, everything is hooked up Let's see how much fuel we actually have or At least what it's telling me I have and then uh, I've got a little bit over there. 74, it's about three quarter tank. That is what it's telling me. So, that's cool. And we'll grab the extra fuel, we'll dump it in, and then we'll see what it reads. So it's 76, we'll see how much it changes, but. All right, so I put fuel in, which was cool because it wasn't enough to fill it up. So let's just kind of eyeball and see what she says. See how kind of what kind of accuracy we're shooting with over here. So it said three quarter, ninety. It's not well. All right, we'll give it that. It's not quite full. It's pretty full, but I wouldn't call it a hundred. But I'd rather have it be more accurate toward the middle and the bottom. So that is that. I think what I'm gonna do now, since the cover is halfway off, and I made some modifications. Uh, like the blinker and then we got the fuel in there 
might as well take around the block and remember why it is we do what we do when we work on these turds every single day all the time to enjoy them that much uh a lot of people probably think we're crazy but if you watch this channel you get it and uh we love it so you guys know what to do until next time like subscribe share i'm out